Hello and welcome to Kingston Now. This week we have a preview of great summer events locally with Gillian Fisher, Kingston's Coordinator of Tourism and Cultural Affairs. We'll talk art with Christina Varga of the Varga Gallery in Woodstock and we'll start with Kathy Nolan of Catskill Mountain Keeper. Hi Kathy, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Now, Catskill Mountain Keeper, it's such a great name. You're the keeper of mountains. And these mountains, these Catskill Mountains, they're, they're pretty spread out across a whole big area. How big is the area that you guys cover? It's all of the Catskill Park plus the Catskill High Peaks. And the Catskill Park is four counties. It's Ulster County, Greene County, Delaware County, and Sullivan County. And then the surrounding counties form the Catskill Mountain Range. So it's hundreds of uh, thousands of acres of land and most especially the Catskill Park, a very special area set aside for the people of New York State. And, and the Catskill Mountains actually hold a really interesting place in the history of this country because when Henry Hudson sailed up the river from New York, he didn't know it as New York, of course, but he came up and he came around the bend in the Hudson Valley just below the Esopus Lighthouse and saw the Eastern Escarpment for the first time. Those were the highest mountains he'd probably ever seen in his life, quite possibly, unless he'd been to the Himalaya. And for a long time, they were the draw for people from uh, New, York, New York City and all, all along the eastern seaboard because that was the wilderness. It was the wild, right? Absolutely. And it stayed wild in the sense of no settlers for many, many years, hundreds of years actually, settled pretty late on after Henry Hudson. Um, and that's part of its mystery and charm. Uh, but it's also been a place that draws people who are iconoclast, creative people, people who are willing to go out into a more wild area. Uh, it's the birthplace of the environmental movement in the United States, um, with uh, first down in Storm King, but uh, even before that, the Hudson River School of Painters, which many people say should really be called the Catskill Rivers School of Painters, because they came out into the Catskills and painted the landscape here and brought that back to New York City to show people what was here and also what was at risk. Indeed, and along the way, industry came to the mountains and uh, the forestation, the tanning operations are what led to the creation of the Catskill Park because things got so dire 120 years ago that they were afraid they were going to lose it. And there was this great rebound, but then recently, the Catskill Mountain Keeper had to spring up because there are new threats to the mountains. And what are some of those threats? Recently, we've been seeing, um, first in our Sullivan County office, people walking in and saying, there are these gas drillers who are coming to our farms asking us if we'll lease our land for this thing called hydrofracking. What should we do about that? So Mountain Keeper very early on, uh, five, six years ago, as fracking was just becoming an issue in New York State, went to see what those farmers were talking about, went down to Pennsylvania to see what fracking was about, and realized very quickly that this was uh, a very threatening uh, industry for rural New York and for a beautiful, pristine area. Um, so Mountain Keeper has been at the forefront of leading the opposition to bringing fracking into New York State and calling for a ban on fracking activities. Yeah, and we currently have this moratorium in place. It's uh, for people to think that the fight is over or that the ban is permanent. It's not. At any moment, the governor could change his mind and allow fracking. So you guys are continually or continuing the pressure on it. Where do we stand in, in the fight on fracking now? Well, the moratorium that we have is a de facto moratorium. It's not enacted in law. It's just that the governor and the agencies in charge of fracking kind of have their finger on the pause button. So there's an effort that uh, at the New York State Senate and Assembly level to bring in a law that would actually uh, require certain things to happen before uh, fracking could take place, so that would be a legal moratorium. That um, effort is um, ongoing and we support that. We also feel that the um, home rule, that the uh, towns and counties around New York State that have said, we don't want fracking here, is something that should be pursued. Individual municipalities can protect themselves. Catskill Mountain Keeper also is starting a program where we will work with communities that want to bring in a ban like that for their local community and also support them if they should receive a legal challenge. 
it's serious business, but you guys are going to have some fun too. You've got Barn Fest coming up. Tell me about that. Barn Fest is an annual celebration of the Catskills that we've done at Catskill Mountain Keeper now, I think four years in. And it's to really emphasize that even though we oppose some things, we really believe that Catskills has a tremendous amount to offer. So this year's celebration is food, art, and culture of the Catskills. And the event is free to the public. It's uh, in Woodstock this year for the first time. And we invite speakers, we have music, we make some presentations to some of the environmental and community leaders that we've noticed along the way and just at, invite people to come and get together to celebrate the Catskills. And the date is? That's June 22nd. It's Saturday afternoon from noon to 5 p.m. at the Andy Lee Field in Woodstock. Sounds like a terrific event. Thanks for being here, Kathy. My pleasure. Thank you very much. You're watching Kingston Now. Next, we'll talk art with Christina Varga of the Varga Gallery. Welcome back to Kingston Now. The Hudson Valley is home to a strong arts community, and joining us now is local artist and gallery owner, Christina Varga. Hi, Christina. Hi, Jimmy. So, so the arts in this area sort of began with the Hudson River School Painters like yes. 150 years ago. A long time ago. And then a whole bunch of people came to Woodstock around the turn. Seeking utopia. Right, seeking utopia, but a very arts-intensive community developed mm -hmm. there up around the Birdcliff area. Yeah, Mavericks. Mavericks, right. And hung around for a long time, and then it, and Woodstock got to know where your gallery is, got yeah. known mostly for the music festival but that sort of you know it ebbs and flows but the arts community has stayed strong through that entire time what Absolutely. brought you to the area uh i moved to woodstock three weeks after i came here for the first time i came in late 2002 I, sometime between october and november and uh, the reason i left new york city i was living in new york city i left because after september 11th uh there started to be like a real uh, hyper vigilant force in New York City, like uh, SWAT teams in the subways and sirens all the time, and it just got very aggravating. And I thought uh, I needed to relax, and a friend of mine invited me to come up to the Hudson Valley to stay with her in Mount Tremper. She had this amazing little home. And I came and I left, I mean, I left New York City three weeks later. I moved everything in a U-Haul, it was storming. The city was like, no, don't go, don't go. But my windshield wipers were flopping all over the place, it was crazy. But I moved here three weeks after I came and visited for the first time and it was just so magical, beautiful. Uh, the wind, the air, the trees, the water, it really just brought me here and, and I didn't even know about the arts community. Now, Varga Gallery is next to Upstate Films mm -hmm. in Woodstock, next mm -hmm. to the old Tinker Street Cinema. Yep. Was that your first location and how did that come to be? It wasn't my first location. The way that it came to be is when I moved in with my friend, um, she ended up moving to Phoenicia and I wanted to stay in Woodstock. So I sought out a place. I found a little place that was, um, it, I can't remember, remember the address. It was uh, where It's a Wrap is now. It was a little tiny place. It was so tiny I could touch the ceiling with my hands. And I'm five foot three and three quarters. <laughs> so it means it was really like small. And um, I was there, I remember the day that I opened it because the number was 222, February 22nd. And, uh, and that, you know, was a significant number to me, so it sticks in my head. And probably June 1st, exactly, was when I moved into the location that I'm in now. And the way that I found that was a woman came to my gallery and she said, I really need money, I gotta sell this piece of art, can you come to my place and look at it? And she was, I wouldn't say squatting, but my landlady now was letting her stay there. She was the uh, ticket girl for the Tinker Street Cinema. And I walked into her place and uh, it's the gallery that I'm in now. And I was just like, oh my God, I looked up, the ceilings were like 12, 13 feet and the place was huge. And I just knew, I was like, oh, this is my place. And I asked her, I'm like, is this for rent? And moved in, uh, I guess, um, probably within a week of seeing it, I'd say. That seems to be a theme with you. You, you <laughs> see, you act. <laughs> I see, I act. I definitely, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm very impulsive. I have a tendency to uh, go with the flow. And, uh, and I've done that for 10 years, which is, you know, difficult because uh, a lot of people think, oh, she's got money set aside somewhere or her whatever. No, it's a struggle every single month and every single time I got to write a rent check, I'm like, oh my God. But, um, but it's worth it because it's my studio as well as my gallery. And actually in the 10 years that I've had the gallery, I've made 
and sold, but I've made so much work that, uh, that it's kind of transformed into more of a studio now than a gallery because I really can't in good conscience show people's works with the walls so full of my own. So that's kind of been the evolution that I've gone into now and it's really rewarding. And Your art itself, um, what's the genesis of that? Where does it come from? Uh, you know, um, I like to make things and I like to make things out of the things that I have, the things that sort of get pushed towards me, whether that's uh, a door that's thrown away or, uh, you know, a piece of wood. I remember I started the Varga Girls when, uh, when Andre from the Woodstock Building Supply was like, yeah, sure, you can have all those little, you know, the ends of boards that were cut for people. I would just take... I'd take hundreds of them, literally. I'd pack my car full, and I use those to make artwork. Um, I don't really have a particular motivation. I mean, I do. It's to express myself, and it's to have somewhat of a message in my work, but uh, I just, it's, it's like uh, breathing for me. It's not something that I have to try, oh, what am I going to make today? It's just I make it, and I just, you know, it's just, it just comes out of my fingers. I don't know how to explain it. It just naturally happens, and I'm very grateful for that. Is there a consistent message through your art? When you say there's a message to your yeah. art, is there a consistent one message that you're trying to get across? Um, well, uh, I think that um, probably uh, to, to, be, to express your highest and best truth, if possible, with things, and it's also sometimes somewhat salacious with me, it's like there's beauty in everything. So, for instance, my Varga Girl series, which is done with the vintage erotica, that is um, that was my sort of knee-jerk reaction to, um, I'd say, the evolution of pornography throughout the years, and also that uh, we have a tendency to be very uptight in the world, but you know, also in the United States, especially in the United States, to tell you the truth. And uh, for me, things that other people would be, uh, would think that they were just like a little salacious, a uh, little, uh, you know, edgy. I like those things and I like to push those boundaries. So I put a halo on a naked woman because I think that's beautiful. And I, I'd say that I'm somewhat of a feminist, but not in the um, not in the way that a lot of feminists consider themselves feminists, more in the I respect uh, nature, I respect the body, I respect things that, the symbiosis of life, I mean, just really being in it. And, uh, and I think that artists are kind of maybe the people that really are the pulse of what the nations, what, what civilization is thinking and feeling. And so I, I really don't analyze too terribly much what it is that I'm making, but uh, I try to stay true to my inner voice, whatever that is, and then just put that message out there. Christina Varga, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. This is Kingston Now. The summer season is upon us. There's so much to do, and joining us next is Jillian Fisher, Kingston's Coordinator of Tourism and Cultural Affairs, to tell us about some of it. You're watching Kingston Now. Jillian Fisher is Kingston's Coordinator of Tourism and Cultural Affairs, and she's here for a preview of events happening in the area this summer. Hi, Jillian. Hi, Jimmy. So it's summer. Yay, That's finally. Great. And um, going on, what goes hand in hand with summer is great summer events. So tell us what's happening in the city this summer. What's not happening in the city of Kingston this summer? Might be a shorter list. <laughs> it's true, it would be. Crickets, crickets, nothing. There is so much going on. Um, just today, as a matter of fact, we had the opening day of the Kingston Farmers Midtown Market, and that was amazing. The Center for Creative Education had their Let's Move Ulster event there. We had politicians galore. It was an amazing thing. Broadway and Kingston got shut down. So it was an absolutely amazing event. And the Kingston Midtown Farmers Market will continue through September every single Tuesday from 3 in the afternoon through 7. So what you haven't loaded up on at the Uptown Kingston Farmers Market, which of course is every Saturday, and that's from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. up on Wall Street. Um, you can stop by midweek, pop in, get your fresh vegetables, pick up dinner. I don't know if you've noticed the new San Severia. I did notice it. I don't know what it is. It is um, basically like a Belgian waffle tent, but to call it a tent 
does not do this justice yeah, it because it's like, like a, a building. Yeah, it's a structure. It's got hard walls. It's amazing. And I want to say, um, and I'm sure I will mess this up, but the structure is at least like 100 years old. And when you go inside, there are booths and there are mirrors and there are painted flowers everywhere. And it is just gorgeous. And that will be having concerts in it throughout the summer as well. So every single Tuesday for the Midtown Farmers Market, when you go, you can pick up dinner and you can eat right there in the booths or outside on the patio. Um, but it will be there for people to use um, all week long as well. Nice addition to Midtown. Now I know the Hudson River Maritime Museum has also opened, right? Yes, they've opened and they have a boatload of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I know that they've got the uh, New York City Fire Boat, the John J. Harvey, coming up for a couple weeks, right? They From do. They do, and they also have, and I'm going to cheat today with my computer because there is so much going on, they also have the Maritime Cup Regatta going on as well, which is very neat. So when I tell you there's so much going on in Kingston, and that's just the, the tip of the iceberg, not that there are icebergs right now in the Hudson, of what's going on in, uh, in Kingston. So if we were to continue through May, just taking us through the end of May, the Music in the Park series starts every single Wednesday. And so that will be in different parks throughout the city of Kingston, but every single Wednesday, and that goes from 6 to 7 p.m. And um, Craig, Craig, forgive me, I'm spacing on your last name because I'm looking at Jimmy right now, but from BWS Entertainment, Craig took it upon himself to program all of the music for this summer. And it's so important that people come out because it is a free series. And, these and it's live music. It's about. live yeah. music mm -hmm. and it's wonderful and you get to go to different parks throughout the city which is nice as well. It takes you to a part of the city that maybe you don't go to so often. So that's exciting. That's every single Wednesday from 6 to 7. And then also uh, the Old Dutch Church from uh, starting at 12.15 on Thursdays. They have the fine arts recitals. Probably at least eight if not nine out of the ten things that I'll be speaking about are all free. For anyone to go to. Um, quality of living is really important to folks in the city of Kingston. We want to make sure that everyone is able to access things and enjoy it. So shall we move on out of May? And feel free to jump in at any time since I've just kind of <laughs> well, like taken over. Well I know we've got movies in the park coming back this year, right? We do have movies in the park coming back. So let me see when that starts. Um, Movies in the Park starts in June. So first, um, before we get to Movies in the Park, I would like to speak about the Forsyth Nature Center. Oh, sure. If of that's course. okay. Well, that's another terrific uh, resource that the city has. They're incredible. Yeah. And they are doing so many series this summer. They have Friday night paddles, Saturday morning paddles, and Saturday evening paddles. So you can go out and go kayaking on the Hudson all weekend long through the summer. Now, the, the center itself is off of Lucas Avenue. That's correct. But if you want to participate in the kayaking, all you have to do is literally meet underneath the Wirtz Street Bridge. And that's it. You just have to show up at 5.30 p.m. And all of the paddles include equipment. When you go, they provide everything. And if you're a City of Kingston resident, you get a discount. Look at that, huh? Just saying. And I can tell you from experience, being on a kayak in the Hudson, it's mm -hmm. a view like no other. It's well oh, worth it. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, the Hudson itself is just so majestic. So whether you are doing one of the Hudson River cruises or whether you're in a kayak, to be able, as you said, to be in the water and then looking this way. I went on one of the Hudson River cruises last season and an eagle flew overhead. It was funny because I had just gotten back from the Rockies where we were like looking for eagles, no eagles, I'm on the Hudson River. And, and you know, the people who don't take advantage of that, uh, um, the opportunity to go out on the river, even mm -hmm. on, one, on one of the cruises, it's like living in New York City and never going to the Statue of Liberty. It's, it's silly. true. It's right there. Go it's true. It. Go out on the river, see it. Especially because it's so accessible. It's so accessible. And uh, the Forsyth Nature Center is also doing all sorts of um, hikes. They have adult hikes. They have something called the Naturalist Passport, where you go and you document. You're going all these different places and you're document documenting things that you're doing. So the Forsyth Nature Center is just off the charts with what they're doing. And everything that I'm talking about today, you can go to the City of Kingston website, which is www.kingston.com hyphen ny.gov 
and everything that I'm speaking about, there will be more information and further contact information for now, people there. Now, last year there. they moved the fireworks to the actual 4th of July. In previous mm -hmm. years, they had it the weekend before, the weekend after, so as not to conflict with other municipalities. But it felt great to have the fireworks in Kingston on the 4th of July. Are they doing that again this year? They are, and it's wonderful. It's a very Americana um, event, and it will be on the 4th again, down on the Rondout. But new this year, which is very exciting, on the 5th, the Hudson Valley Philharmonic is giving a free concert down in the Rondout District on the 5th. So you can come to Kingston if you don't happen to live locally. You can come and spend the entire weekend here because between the fireworks on Thursday, the Philharmonic on Friday, and just everything that goes on during the week, the weekend in Kingston, please. We've got uh, just a couple more moments, so is there anything really big that you want to tell us about for the summer? There is. There's something called the two-row wampum that is coming up, which is very exciting. And um, again, a boatload of Native Americans are stopping at the Maritime Museum on their way to different places. Some are coming by horseback, some about 100 are coming by kayak. And they are all meeting at the Mar Hudson River Maritime Museum. And that is going to be an amazing event. Terrific. Well, thanks for coming by and letting us know about the great things happening this summer. Thank you summer. for always having me back. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> thanks, Jillian. Thanks, Jimmy. That's it for this week's show. Thanks to Kathy Nolan of Catskill Mountain Keeper. Find out more about them at CatskillMountainKeeper.org. Thanks to Christina Varga. Find her at TheVargaGallery.com. And thanks, as always, to Jillian Fisher. Remember, all of our shows are now archived on our YouTube channel. And you can find that link on our Facebook page. For Kingston Now, I'm Jimmy Buck. We'll see you next time.